just fabulous to see stuff that you know we put away 10 years ago or some of it's even been in storage for 25 years for as long as the museum's been around. 90% of our collection was in storage um, in the old museum we just didn't have the room to exhibit and so there's a lot more on display today. The previous museum was about a thousand square feet of exhibition space. The new Park City Museum's 12,000 square feet so we've grown. A lot of people, you know, history was not their favorite subject at school and it wasn't something that they pursued and most museums they think of as being, you know, dusty stuff in cases have quite a lot of um, documentaries playing. And, you know, some of them are really fun because it's home movies made in the 60s when film, 35 millimeter film was, you know, the brand new technology of the day. The meat sign hanging outside the Smith & Brim store is 1903 and I think it was the first electric sign on Main Street um, and you can see it has 80 light bulbs in it. So I don't think it would meet the sign code today, <laughs> but it's fabulous. While shopkeepers may have been able to afford electricity, that wasn't the case for everyone in town. 100 years ago, you know, electricity was brand spanking new technology and people couldn't necessarily afford the light bulbs. And <laughs> so they'd have light bulbs in their house saying, stolen from the mine company. Not only are the exhibits historical artifacts, the building itself has a great history. This is part of the original 1885 City Hall building and it's the territorial jail, considered state of the art when they built it in 1885 and then early 1900s they remodeled and put a concrete floor in to you know, bring it up to more livable standards. This was actually the fire department that we're standing in right now, um, right up until the 1970s. And this is an original Park City fire truck, 1926. Um, the second auto fire truck that Park City bought. Of course, you can't talk about Park City without talking about mining. This is a single cage, so half the size of the double one that we saw upstairs. But this one we let everybody climb in and you can see how just how wobbly and unstable it would have been riding down the shaft into the mine. Wanted to add some fun things for kids, well, and adult kids as well. Um, explaining mining, because it's not, you know, show up with your pickaxe and sort of chip away at the rocks. It's actually drill holes, stick dynamite in and create large explosions. As the mines ran out of silver, skiing became the town's main industry. You know, the Scandinavians that came to Park City at the turn of the century brought skiing with them. And at that point, everything was just big, giant, long skis. And so you went downhill and off the mine dumps was the fun. <laughs> and then after the Second World War, two miners opened up a snow park resort, which is where Deer Valley is today. They were driving to Alta and realized, you know, we could build our own ski resort and we wouldn't have to drive. <laughs> Load the skiers on at the Spiro Tunnel and then they would ride inside these cars three miles through the Spiro Tunnel where they would get off underground and then unload and get onto the, um, to the cage and ride that 1800 feet to the surface took an hour and of course it was inside a mine which was very wet and dripping and cold um, so it wasn't very popular. <laughs> Most people in Park City will recognize our gondola. When Park City um, you know, took the gondola out a few years ago we said please can we have one and they've been keeping us all this time <laughs> which was just fabulous because we knew at some point we were going to have enough room to put a gondola in the museum and there it is. not a pure Park City history, it really is a Western American experience. So we have, you know, William, William Jennings Bryant running for president in our exhibits and, um, you know, we have the Kennedy administration offering um, redevelopment loans in the 60s. So it, it is a much broader picture and I just, uh, we did that purposefully because we, you know, we wanted to connect with people and their experience and, and make it a, um, 
a meaningful experience for everybody. It was really fun. It was really educational. I had no idea that all of this uh, history was here.